Okay, the, the uh, next item on our agenda, Five Tribes Economic Impact Study. Uh, it says here Stephen Peterson is going to give us a presentation, who from the University of Idaho, and I imagine it's Dr. Peterson. If you're on staff at the University of Idaho, I'm assuming you're a PhD in your field. <clears throat> okay, you've got the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. My name's uh, Steve Peterson, and I'm a regional economist at the University of Idaho. They say that uh, economics at its best is storytelling, supported by uh, statistics, uh, facts, and theory. And uh, as I go through the presentation, I'd like to put context uh, to the numbers um, as, uh, as we, we proceed. Um, I uh, was uh, born and raised in Lewiston, um, and uh, I Spent my first five years uh, working as a realtor for my dad's real estate firm, and uh, then the, the following 25 years at the University of Idaho as a regional economist. And my spe research specialty is, is economic impact assessments, and I've done impacts in almost every uh, industry and service in the state, over 200 of them. And I find that the most impactful studies that I've done have been with uh, uh, the Native American tribes. Uh, throughout the region, uh, the most interesting, the most impactful, uh, and uh, um, and the most engageful. Uh, um, the very first uh, study I did was uh, about 25 years ago, maybe longer. Um, we were approached by the Nespers tribe to do an economic impact assessment on a new casino they were building. It was called the Clearwater River Casino uh, just outside of Lewiston. And uh, so as we began to gather the data, um, I ma made a kind of a shocking uh, discovery that even without the casino, the Nespers tribe was the second biggest employer in the broader regional economy. Uh, and I'd lived there my whole life. My dad, myself were in business, and we had absolutely no idea. Um, and that uh, started a process of discovery uh, analogous to an Easter egg hunt to discover all of the contributions and impacts the tribe have on the various economies in the state of Idaho. Uh, since that time, uh, we've done about five uh, studies on all five tribes. Uh, in Idaho over the last 20 years, and we've done individual impact assessments uh, for, the, for the individual tribes as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, the battery works. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to start um, by covering the depth and breadth of tribal activities uh, in the region and economy. Um, it, is, uh, it is surprising both in terms of its depth and breadth, and I'm, I'm going to kind of go through these lists uh, to give a good sense of that. Uh, there, first of all, tribal governments are sovereign nations, and when you actually look at the activities they carry out, they very much resemble that of a state and local government. Uh, they have basic governmental operations. They have uh, very sophisticated health care systems. In fact, some of their health care facilities are the best in the world. Uh, they have cultural development and activities. They have judicial systems. They have an array of family services. They have uh, poverty programs and income support, which are very important in these very rural economies. They have a law enforcement system. Uh, they have their own housing infrastructure, and as we all know, housing is an extremely uh, important issue in Idaho. Uh, we recently completed a uh, housing study up in Kootenai County, and as part of that, found out that Idaho has the 12th highest housing cost in the country, and we had the fastest growing housing prices in the last four years. And so having that housing infrastructure 
uh, was always important, but it's taken on an increasingly uh, more important role. They have infrastructure, uh, utilities, water, sewer, and garbage. They have transportation systems. They have communications. They're involved uh, in dark fiber uh, installations uh, in, in a very broad region that Idaho is situated in with large mountains and very rural areas. That's very important. Uh, they're leaders in economic development. Uh, the tribes are important regional uh, development engines. Uh, they are developing in technology and industrial parks. They have road and infrastructure uh, uh, projects. Uh, they have telecommunications and fiber installations. They have a variety of manufacturing operations. And then they carry out a, a, uh, an array of uh, feasibility assessments. Um, they are involved in the development uh, and sustainable uh, natural resource activities. They have a huge dryland agriculture uh, presence uh, focused on mostly a uh, wheat, uh, wheat crop rotation. They have irrigated agriculture, including uh, potatoes and sugar beets. They have meat production, including beef and buffalo. Uh, fisheries, they have forestry operations. They have wood products, they have grazing. Uh, they have uh, over 150,000 acres uh, in cultivation uh, uh, throughout the region. Uh, they're involved in environmental uh, protection and restoration activities, which we're all familiar with. They have some of the world's top fisheries and hatchery operations. They have waterways, uh, habitat restoration, water quality monitoring, wetlands protection, restoration and management of deer, uh, elk, moose, and other populations, endangered and threatened species recovery, brown site restorations, and of course, enhancing biodiversity, uh, just to name a few of their uh, environmental and uh, uh, natural resource protections. They're uh, innovators of new value-added products. We've been involved in a number of these uh, feasibility assessments, berry, and, uh, berry production and flash freezing. Uh, USDA beef and other meat uh, production facilities are on the drawing boards in almost all of the tribes. They have, uh, uh, the Nez Perce tribe is working on a specialty flour uh, mill. Uh, they have vineyards and win uh, wineries under consideration and hemp production. Uh, renewable energy uh, development, the Nez Perce tribe just uh, was awarded a $37 million EPA uh, energy efficiency grant, but all of the five tribes have been involved in energy efficiency, and I've listed some up there. The Shoshone Bannock Hotel and Events Center won an award for energy efficiency. The Coeur d'Alene Tribe has been involved in a number of efficiency operations and so forth with a focus on solar, wind, and biofuel projects. Tourism, recreation, and hospitality, uh, we're uh, all uh, fairly familiar with those, but perhaps not the depth and, and breadth of those. They have seven casinos, and uh, there are two on the drawing board. They have four destination resort convention centers and hotels. They have two golf courses. One, uh, the Coeur d'Alene's, is a world-class world golf course, and the Nez Perce is uh, under development. They have a hot springs and spa. They have several travels, uh, travel centers and gas stations. Uh, they have craft and specialty shops. They have numerous restaurants and fine dining. They have tribal and related tourism, which by its own right uh, have a substantial impact on the state's economy. And they, they are attracting visitors, not just from all over the United States, but all over the world. In terms of economic resiliency, uh, as I made my first discovery that the Nez Perce tribe at that time was the second biggest employer behind what was then Potlatch Forest Corporation, now Clearwater Paper, all of the five tribes uh, rank in the top three of their regional economies. Their footprint is large enough that uh, if you wave the wand and their activities dis disappeared, the state of Idaho would likely be thrown into a recession. Their economic footprint is that big and substantial. Um, the other part of their economies is the offsetting stability they do or the business cycle stability that they offer. Uh, we, we saw a lot of this in the COVID-19 uh, you know, uh, economy interruption and shutdowns that occurred, but we've also seen it in past recessions in that when other industries are extremely volatile 
and then large swings in activity, uh, both up and down the tribes, offer a complementary stability uh, to those economies. The economies are extremely important because they're in the most, uh, some of the most rural areas in the state. And uh, um, they offer uh, uh, rural uh, economic development activities that otherwise just wouldn't, uh, just wouldn't exist. Uh, tribes as innovators, we've been involved in a number of studies. Um, you know, innovation is one of the key activities they're involved in in almost everything that they do. Uh, and it's uh, really fascinating. Uh, and uh, one, of the, one of the areas most recently was their, their work in supply chain disruptions uh, from COVID-19. We discovered we're all part of uh, international food systems and production systems. And their longstanding work on local sustainable agriculture, local sustainable uh, supply chains, uh, it has taken on a new importance when you realize you've run out of something like toilet paper and uh, there's no hope of re re uh, replenishing that anytime soon, right? Uh, they're engaged in energy uh, sustainability and independence. And one of the newer areas is small business creation and development. And I think that's going to be one of the main areas that will uh, be very, very impactful for rural economies. One of, the, one of the challenges that tribe faces is they generate this huge amount of economic activity, but it tends to flow outside of the reservation regions, outside of the rural regions, to the, more, to the, to the cities. Uh, for example, Coeur d'Alene, uh, Lewiston, and Pocatello were some of the biggest beneficiaries of that activity, and uh, uh, to the south, the, the, the greater Boise economy. Uh, so we uh, created a model of the state of Idaho, and uh, again, this is about the fifth update of our uh, five tribe study. Their uh, overall footprint is about $1.545 billion in overall economic activity. Uh, they support, uh, this is including the multiplier effects, uh, just under 13,000 jobs in any given one year, making them uh, one of the most impactful employers in the state. Um, their wages and salaries that they pay out gross is 664 million. And in terms of visitors that they bring in the state, both involve both with uh, tribal gaming and their um, event centers, and also with their own tribal activities, uh, hard to estimate, but we estimate perhaps about a million a year. So they have a very impactful role in promoting tourism in the state. The direct spending, this is uh, not including the multiplier effects. This is just the raw spending on all their activities is nearly $815 million. And uh, in Idaho, that's a lot of money. Uh, and uh, so that's just the raw spending of uh, goods and services that go through, uh, go through the, all of the casino or all of the tribal operations. Uh, they have about, uh, about 4,500 what I call core employees. Uh, and then they're to these are direct employees. They don't include the multiplier effect. And then when you add in their agriculture employees, they have a lot of uh, contract employees and so forth. Um, they uh, increase to, to about 6,768. 6, so any way you slice the, the employment numbers, the, the tribes are uh, among the biggest employers in the state of Idaho. Uh, they have uh, just under 4,000 video gaming machines, uh, and as of the count of this study, 616 motel rooms, but I could see with some expansion plans, I could easily go over 1,000. So they're very, very uh, impactful in the hospitality and recreation industries in the state. Um, they have uh, just under a million acres of land that uh, are in ownership by the tribes in various forms. And of that, they have 152,000 uh, acres in, in production. Um, I'd like to point out that the uh, sugar beet and potato production uh, in the Shoshone Bannocks um, arena are some of the most uh, are some of the most productive in the world, um, and uh, uh, very important to Idaho's economy. Um, and again, this is just a summary of the total economic contributions, including the multiplier effects. Um, um, and I'd like to point out that, 
I go back to my original story about the Clearwater River Casino. Uh, it was originally uh, it was originally an inflated building, so it was uh, kept uh, it was kept operating with uh, fans, right? And uh, there was an event that occurred in which they had a power outage and the backup batteries failed and the walls came came down, right? Nobody was hurt, but it shut the it shut the casino down for for about three weeks and a lot of the Lewiston businesses were hurting. And uh, it suddenly was a wake up call to the to the broader community that, you know, what goes on on the tribal economies matters a lot, matters to all of us, uh, and that we're all in the in an integrated economy together. Uh, so it was a really important lesson, uh, I think, for the community. Um, here I break out the operations by, by general function. And uh, you can get the central government and all of its operations, uh, about 3,000 jobs. Uh, the environmental services, which are really important uh, operations of the tribes. They've been a leaders in uh, restoration and, and uh, sustainable activities throughout the state. They have about uh, just under 1,600 jobs. Uh, education, health, and welfare, about 2,200. Public safety, about 300. Capital outlay and investment, which is very important, about uh, 400 and, uh, 450. Uh, the casino resorts are about 2,400. Uh, the other enterprises, about 338. Tourism and visitor spending, about 488. Again, we, we estimate there's about a million visitors that come through the state associated with the tribes. And then agriculture employment, which is very important, about just under 2,000. And then uh, each of the tribes uh, provided a, uh, a, a summary of their, their key uh, uh, cultural and tribal activities, and you can see them here, and these are available to you. One thing to note is that each tribe is its own economic, social, and cultural ecosystem, uh, very unique. Um, and uh, um, when you, if you uh, do a particular study on one tribe, it doesn't translate automatically in, uh, in doing another tribe, right? Because they are so different, they are engaged in such different activities. Um, I recall we were working on an impact for a tribe in eastern Washington, and uh, we were just about to submit the draft of it, and uh, we did a Google search and come up with a basically a convenience store we didn't re recognize in our numbers, and went out there and found out there was an entire separate division, uh, five convenience stores, uh, so a spa, uh, motel, there was a wood products industry that, were, that was completely under a separate division. Again, going back to the Easter egg uh, hunt uh, that uh, these studies often, uh, often are analogous to. Um, uh, so uh, um, I'll conclude by uh, um, saying that uh, uh, this study, as the previous ones uh, have uh, you know, have continued to show how impactful uh, the economies uh, of the five tribes are, how important they are to the state of Idaho uh, and to their local regions. And thank you very much, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you for that presentation. Any comments or questions for, uh, is it Dr. Peterson? Uh, Steve. S Steve Peterson. <laughs> any questions for Steve Peterson? I have a master's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Senator Just. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. Uh, Mr. Peterson, I've, I've been uh, impressed with these studies since I've read the first one from 2822, and I think most people that uh, have them in front of them are very impressed with them. And I'm wondering, and maybe you can't answer this question, maybe somebody else on the, on the council can, is there a, a public relations plan to get this information out uh, through the media? Go ahead, uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, um, Senator, we're trying. <laughs> uh, but I think the point's well, well taken. It's still remarkable how, um, how little the public really understands about the importance of the tribal economies. And uh, you know, I, th I think we can all do a better effort at trying to get the, get the, uh, get the message out, because I think it's really important. Um, Okay, thank you for that. Any other questions, comments for Stephen Peterson? Um, I do. Uh, uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Chairman Tyler. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Thank you, sir. Uh, sure. Real, real quickly, I just wanted to uh, say, uh, even though we have all this here, there's uh, other aspects of all this, uh, different studies that's probably uh, not not uh, on here, because there's uh, we still have a uh, poverty in, uh, in our in our in our amongst our people in uh, areas. There's homelessness still. There's uh, people. There's uh, there's uh, other aspects of this. Of, of, of where uh, we, we we need to find a way to help and infrastructure, uh, the, the 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 broadband, Wi-Fi. <clears throat> We're primitive over there, and uh, in the different areas. I'm not sure about the other tribes. I can't speak for them, but we want to make sure everything's protected. I don't know if you have, you're the right guy to do this, but you know we have uh, like the spectrum. We need to make sure that's taken care of. We want to make sure our water's protected for our future. There's so many things that part part of this is water is going to be like gold, and then. It's being polluted left and right all over the EDB and our reservation. The sad situation. So we need. A, and then there's a super fun site. It was a fire over there by a simp plot, and then they're seeping into the groundwater. All this, uh, this uh, ignitions of phos, phosphate, and uh, all this high tech scientific language uh, scientists know. But I, all I know is it's toxic waste, hazardous, and they're waiting for somebody, the human, to die before they do something. So I'm not sure where Idaho is at, but that and that. And there's, uh, I'm not sure where those other individuals are because it plays into uh, all these uh, areas of uh, uh, everybody has to uh, play into it, the prog progress. And, but there's be, there needs to be a balance. But I think there needs to be, uh, you know, the tribes can't help us. But all we want to do is see if uh, Idaho, how do we write a bill, you know, but, uh, us, us tribes here could do one to help protect, change the 1872 mining law. And, Change the, the the ways of the corporations, companies should uh, remedy all the, the the destruction that occurred throughout life. And I know time's running, time's running out here. But I drove over here, so uh, I hope I get a time to speak. I know that's that's a, and we have Indian time in, in in our country, but we have to run all the non-Indian time. No, no offense, but that, that's a pretty tough situation. We don't have enough time, but I think uh, there needs to be more told and. Other, other aspects of life, I don't even know that's a different subject. But to me, it's all connected. It's like uh, our, our Earth Mother is all connected. So that's a different subject too. But it's all part of this economic, it all comes with for money. Everybody wants money. They kicked us out of Salmon River country back in the 1905, 1907, forced us out of there, forced us out of Boise, 1869, all these areas and then, then for gold and silver and all this. So I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe somebody could check it out because I might not be here for a long time, but at least I'm here to say it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Peterson, you have the floor. <laughs> um, this, uh, as you indicated, uh, Chairman, this, this was one type of study, and so it didn't directly address many of the important issues you're raising. I will point out the paradox is that the, the, the five tribes are a huge engine of growth but they capture only a fraction of the benefits they create. And so there, there is a, a systemic poverty on uh, many of the reservations in rural areas. Uh, the average income is below the state and below the nation in many areas. They struggle in terms of, of, uh, of uh, you know, basic infrastructure uh, and uh, many basic necessities. Uh, so that that paradox, even how to frame the report, we've had that discussion because we, we, we almost make it seem like the tribes or the tribal members are directly benefiting from all of this. They are a little bit, but most of that benefit is going to the surrounding communities and to the economy as a whole. And so there's a, there's a dual story here, um, um, a balance to tell. I have a question. You've said you've updated the study several times over. How many years? Um, uh, at least 20. <laughs> okay. Is the trend, which way is the trend moving? Is it a positive trend? Is it a negative trend? Um, it, uh, the, the five tribes economies grew very rapidly in the first, uh, I would say the first three studies, and then it's been a slow, steady up climb since then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Peterson? Senator Just. Thank you, Co-Chair. I, I just have a comment and, and, and uh, really a question for the Council. Uh, the legislative members of the Council did uh, put together a little op-ed on this, and we circulated that. I, I, I'm not saying that that is the magic bullet to get this out to the uh, uh, news media, but we'd be willing, certainly uh, happy to do that. 
if it won't, if the rest of the council wants to go out from the whole council, that's a, a possibility as well. Or I'm willing to do whatever mm -hmm. the, the group would like to do. I, I just think we need to know more about this in in general, the uh, uh, general public. Okay, question for you, Senator Jess. Have you shared that op-ed with uh, tribal members of the council? I did. Okay. Um, I'm willing to have a, uh, I, I would sign on to having it go out representing the entire council. Any comments on that? Chairman Wheeler. Uh, thank you, Co-Chair Hart. Uh, I definitely appreciate uh, um, uh, Council Member Justin, his recommendation to move forward with uh, utilizing the Idaho Council on Indian, Indian Affairs to um, help uh, um, communicate this uh, study out to the general po population. Uh, you know, I think each of us probably have our own communications department that could work along with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we would we'd definitely be uh, wanting to do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chairman Wheeler. And Senator Just, um, I know I've seen it twice. Yes. Is everybody signed off on that? Uh, Mr. Co-Chair, I wouldn't say everyone has signed off on it. The legislative uh, uh, members have. Okay. Okay. I haven't heard any feedback from the, the tribal members, and, and I would certainly want to hear that. Uh, we may have gotten something wrong. Okay. We want to make sure. Uh, how about if you make a motion that we send that out as a communication from the council? We can, if, there, if there's a second, we'll debate it. All right. right. It, yes, I move that uh, we... We send the op-ed that has been circulating uh, as a, a communication from the council to Idaho Media. Is there, is there a second? Uh, Representative Roberts, you seconded it? Okay, it's a motion in front of the council. Do we have debate on that? Chairman Wheeler. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Co-Chair Hart. Uh, once again, I appreciate uh, to move this to the floor and uh, um, the opportunity for the tribes to be able to make comments within that op-ed too would be, we would like to see that as well, uh, to be able to add any comments that would come from, okay. you know, specifically for, from Nespers, uh, we would like to add um, a perspective in that as well. Okay. So if it is a joint, uh, if it is an op-ed that come from the uh, state legislature, then uh, this being the Idaho Council on Indian Affairs, I think that input is is will be of value coming from the tribes uh, on the Idaho Council on Indian Affairs. Okay, so um, I think Chairman uh, Tyler had a comment. Yes, thank you, uh, sir and everyone. And I just wanted to make a brief uh, comment as well, similar to uh, uh, Chairman Wheeler, Wheeler's uh, comment. I know uh, I can't speak for, uh, in our constitution and bylaws, I, I can't uh, be a dictator. So I got to talk to uh, the rest of the council uh, with the quorum before we make a decision. You know, going to discussion first and uh, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of negativity that you guys don't understand that we, we feel, I know you got, you're all our friends in here, yeah, we know that. But there's uh, others out there give us backlash and uh, negative comments on certain things all over uh, it's, it's it's unfortunate it has to be that way not just for us but even even on uh, social media facebook and all that but it's a sad situation in this day and age we got a red and blue fighting right now and it's uh, and then all these things happening in the in the country so we want to make sure it's done right and uh, so we, i gotta go back and take it and to my, my uh, comrades and uh, see where uh, we could put in some kind of comment because it's gonna, always going to be a backlash. Unfortunately, that's human nature, and that hurts our people, and our youth see it, and our, our future sees it. And that's why we got to make a change here in Idaho so everybody could all get along and uh, move forward in a positive fashion because long time, you know, it's, it's, it's time to change, and people don't like it. it, it it's unfortunate, and it's, it takes a long time, that snell's pace to get these things rolling. But uh, I guess this guy's the champion, huh? Stephen, thank you. Okay, I was under the impression that uh, the tribal members had uh, provided editorial um, comments on this op-ed, but you've you've seen it, but you haven't commented on it. Is that tr is that true? Okay, so we could amend the motion to something to the effect that we'll send this op-ed out after the five tribal members have signed off on it. Might take it a while to get that done. It goes back and forth a lot, but. Um, I don't. I don't want to send something out that you're not comfortable with, <clears throat> Chairman Wheeler. 
Uh, thank you, Coach Earhart. Uh, you know, at Nest First, we'll definitely get um, uh, our communications team on this and, you know, our internal team to review this and uh, get our comments submitted to <laughs> Uh, the Idaho Council on Indian Affairs for uh, um, getting this op-ed out, the joint op-ed. Uh, okay. Or, I don't know if it's a joint op-ed, if it's coming from the Idaho Council on Indian Affairs, it'd just be an op-ed from the Idaho Council on Indian yeah. Affairs, correct? Correct. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll take that as a amended motion and I'll second it. So uh, if, if that's the case, then um, we wouldn't send it out until all the tribal members have reviewed it, commented on it, and you're all comfortable with it. Okay. Okay, that's the motion. <laughs> any other any other debate on that motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, good. Okay, so Senator Jess, can you kind of coordinate that? Yes. All right, that sounds good. Okay, uh, any other questions for uh, Steven Peterson? Um, and can we, uh, can you ask uh, Chairwoman Porter if she has a comment or a question for Mr. Peterson? Okay, all right, good. Okay, uh, that's the end of our agenda. I did want to